Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which this event takes place, the Wongatha peoples, and pay my respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. I also extend this respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. As most of you would be aware, Fortescue started out as a very small exploration company just over 20 years ago and has become one of the world's largest iron ore producers. Today, our transition to a green technology, metals and energy company is well underway and we are working to accelerate commercial decarbonisation through heavy industry rapidly, profitably and globally. We have always been driven to not only achieve our goals, but to achieve them faster, more cost effectively and smarter than our critics would have ever thought possible. Our business is comprised of two divisions, metals, which is in its 21st year as one of the world's lowest cost iron ore producers, and energy, which was established in 2020 to lead the world in stepping beyond fossil fuels by developing green electrons, green molecules and green technology at scale, locking the company into a future through invention. It is plain to see we are not your average mining company. On to our performance. We recently shared our June quarterly report with the market and it was an outstanding quarter. Our iron ore shipments were a record 53.7 million tonnes, which was a 10% increase from the June quarter of last year. This incredible result contributed to 191.6 million tonnes for FY24 and demonstrated our unique culture and values following the implementation of a recovery plan after an ore car derailment in December 2023. Not many could have pulled off what we were able to. This was truly the result of our values in action and a massive team effort to produce another record quarter. A significant achievement this year has also been our total recordable injury frequency rate, which improved to 1.3 for the financial year. An amazing result reflecting our unrelenting focus on safety. This shows a 28% improvement from FY23. The health and safety of our people and communities in which we operate, including our contractors and our suppliers, will always be our highest priority. We also continue to remain firmly committed to ensuring we have a workforce that is reflective of the communities in which we live. For the fifth consecutive year, Fortescue was listed in the Parity.org Best Companies for Women to Advance list in 2024, and our female employment rate sits at 24% and continues to rise. We are also very proud to be one of Australia's largest employers of First Nations people who represent 11% of our workforce across our Pilbara iron ore operations. At its heart, Fortescue is a project development company and a high performance operator. Our iron ore operations are located in the Pilbara and we move more than 2 million tonnes every day across three mining hubs, which are connected by 760 kilometres of rail to shipping facilities in Port Hedland. Our supply chain extends to our innovative tug fleet and eight purpose-built 260,000 tonne capacity Fortescue ore carriers, which have been designed to complement our port and maximise our safety and productivity of Fortescue's operations. The Fortescue Hive is our expanded, integrated operations centre based in our East Perth headquarters and brings together our entire supply chain. We continue to find ways to do things better, faster, safer and always less expensive, evident through our industry leading cost position. Building off the foundation of our Pilbara hematite operations, we are focused on investing in growth and we absolutely have growth options across both metals and energy. One of our near term opportunities is Ironbridge. Ironbridge signifies Fortescue's entry into the super high grade segment of the iron ore market and allows us to provide an enhanced product range. It also increases our iron ore production and shipping capacity. Ironbridge has had some challenges, particularly with water, but commissioning activities continue to make real progress. And during the last quarter, we deployed an innovative water management strategy to bank water. 
this capital efficient option may mitigate the need to replace the high pressure section of the raw water pipeline from the Canning Basin and is a great example of the team using their brains over the balance sheet. We are focused on the safe and efficient ramp up of Iron Bridge to full production capacity, which is expected in the September quarter of 2025. Our FY25 guidance also includes shipments of five to nine million tonnes from Iron Bridge. The second growth opportunity in metals is exploration led and is a focus for my role leading corporate development. At Fortescue, we believe that early stage exploration is the key to unlocking significant value. We have a highly prospective exploration portfolio with programs underway in the Pilbara, other jurisdictions in Australia, Gabon and South America, where we have a large local team. In Gabon, we have the highly prospective Balinga project, which in, Decem in December we shipped first or from, which was a critical milestone to prove the supply chain and demonstrate to communities and the government that we are the partner of choice. Now our focus has firmly shifted to exploration and studies of this large scale, high grade project and we're in the first year of a three year works program. Activities at Balinga continue to advance and we have seven rigs on site with a combination of reverse circulation and diamond core drilling. From a corporate development perspective, we are concentrating on identifying and pursuing opportunities to include within Fortescue's critical minerals portfolio. We have a focus on copper, rare earths and lithium, as well as, as well as other critical minerals which are essential to the world's decarbonisation efforts and support the green energy transition. We are looking for quality critical minerals assets at all stages of development, from early stage exploration to study stage, right through to operating mines. A few months ago, we entered a farming agreement with Magmatic Resources and continue to advance a number of similar opportunities. We also have a 31% interest in outer copper located in Peru. Moving to decarbonisation, which we see as another opportunity, Fortescue is leading the market in terms of its response to customer, community and investor expectations to reduce and eliminate carbon emissions from its operations. Every year we are emitting more than two and a half million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent into the atmosphere and we're committing not just to reducing this to real zero, but to net zero. Real zero, sorry, not just, I'll start again. And we're committed not just reducing this to net zero, but to real zero. Real zero means no fossil fuels, and unless legally required, no offsets across our operations. Our scope one and two emissions are only part of the puzzle, and our scope three emissions reach 260 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent annually, with 98% of those coming from the steel making process. We know that we are part of a sector that creates enormous emissions globally. And that's why what we're doing is so important. Only when the hard to abate sectors like ours reach zero emissions will the world see any real benefit. It's an enormous, it's an enormous challenge, but it is one that we're up to. To achieve our targets, we're using a combination of known and proven new technologies solar and wind generation, batteries, and developing new technologies around green hydrogen and green ammonia to deliver a green mining fleet and rail operations. We've established a research and development facility to advance and test the technologies needed to go green. We are partnering with global equipment manufacturer, Liebherr, to develop and supply green mining haul trucks to integrate with the zero emissions power system. And through Fortescue Zero, we are working with Liebherr and other OEMs to supply the technology and the power systems to decarbonise our fleet. On the mobility side, we are among the first to be trialling green haul trucks and green trains on our sites, as well as testing our green ammonia capable dual fuel ship, the Green Pioneer. We have now successfully deployed three of Australia's first newly built electric excavators at our Cloudbreak mine site. Powered by a 6.6 kilovolt substation and more than two kilometres of high voltage trailing cable. We have also constructed our first prototype battery electric haul truck, Roadrunner, which you can see on the screen. We have also, 
Roadrun incorporates our in-house zero emissions battery technology developed by Fortescue Zero and can be fully charged in just 30 minutes by our three megawatt fast charger prototype. This testing has helped us to understand and develop haul truck duty and charging cycles and in the future, we plan to develop this charger in order to achieve even higher charging rates. Finally, we've built a hydrogen powered battery electric haul truck dubbed Europa, which recently operated on hydrogen for the first time and will soon undergo site-based commissioning and testing. Delivered in collaboration with Liebherr, Europa contains a 1.6 megawatt hour battery and 500 kilowatts of fuel cells and can store over 380 grams of liquid hydrogen. All of this new equipment requires a fundamental shift in how we plan and operate our mines and building the tools required for this new way of operating. As new equipment goes live, we are using AI to adapt our mine plans, ensuring we maintain production efficiency and we always stay ahead of the curve. But mines aren't just mobile fleet. They're like small cities operating 24 seven with state of the art villages and fixed plant all of which requires a lot of energy to run. Our own Australian sites take on average a 650 megawatt load or 5.7 million megawatt hours of stable power just to operate. And by 2030, that energy needs to come from a grid powered entirely by renewable energy. Through our Pilbara Energy Connect project, renewable energy electricity generated at our sites will be able to be transmitted between our operations via over 500 kilometres of transmission lines. We've already finished building 320 kilometres of transmission lines to connect Solomon to Iron Bridge through to Port Hedland. And we're on track to commission a 100 megawatt solar farm near our Iron Bridge operations in the coming weeks. This will complement the 60 megawatt solar farm commissioned in 2021 as part of the Chichester solar gas hybrid project. To meet such ambitious targets, we will need to work faster than we ever have before. In terms of our energy business, to lay it out simply, within Fortescue Energy sits Fortescue Zero, Fortescue Capital and a number of green energy projects. Fortescue Zero create the innovative technologies needed to eliminate emissions and leave fossil fuels behind. This includes haul trucks, batteries, power conversion, intelligent software, trains, green shipping and green iron. It leads work on hydrogen production systems, product development and supply chain manufacturing. This includes overseeing the Gladstone electrolyzer facility driving research, development, and the commercialization of electrolyzer and hydrogen system technologies, and expanding the company's component manufacturing capability. Fortescue Zero also brings together the Williams technology business and Fortescue's Green Fleet mobility teams based in the UK and here in WA. Secondly, we have Fortescue Capital. This is an asset management business that raises third party funds from institutional investors to invest alongside Fortescue in all its pursuits. Lastly, there are our green energy projects, which you can see on the map in green. Fortescue remains steadfast in our commitment to green hydrogen, and our initial focus is four projects across Australia, the United States, Norway, and Brazil. Following the final investment decision in November 2023, the PEM 50 project and Arizona hydrogen project are progressing. Arizona Hydrogen is being progressed in a disciplined manner ahead of clarity of application of 45V. Our other advanced green energy projects are Holmenessa in Norway and Pessim in Brazil, with the Pessim project advancing to feasibility phase, including commencement of the front end engineering design process. We also have projects in Morocco, Oman, Egypt and Jordan, which will follow these first projects. This is a new market and we've achieved some big milestones in FY24. We continue to be excited by the opportunities ahead and remain focused on ensuring our business decisions make sense commercially and always deliver the best value for our shareholders. Finally, touching on our guidance for FY25. As always, we re remain focused on driving cost efficiencies 
and that includes leveraging technologies and innovation to drive productivity and mitigate mine plan driven cost escalation. Our production guidance is for total shipments to be in the range of 190 to 200 million tonnes. This includes 5 to 9 million tonnes from Ironbridge. Our FY25 C1 cost guidance is 1850 to 1975 per tonne at an Aussie dollar exchange rate of 68 cents. On Ironbridge, Fortescue's proportional share of operating costs before royalties and shipping is anticipated at 500 million. Looking now at capital expenditure, FY25 metals capex is 3.2 to 3.8 billion. We also provide guidance for energy with capex of 500 million and net operating costs of 700 million. So in closing, our hematite operations are performing very well and we are focused on delivering growth through the ramp up of Iron Bridge, unlocking the potential of Belinga and our broader exploration portfolio, decarbonising our operations and advancing the pipeline of green energy projects and technology development opportunities. As we transition to one Fortescue, metals and energy business, our values remain at the heart of everything we do. They're in our DNA and the Fortescue family demonstrates them each and every day. Team members are empowered to make improvements, innovate and challenge the status quo to improve the business. It's this mindset that has enabled us to become one of the world's largest, lowest cost iron ore producers with one of the strongest balance sheets in mining. As we enter the second month of FY25, this year is already set to be one of Fortescue's most exciting yet. Thank you very much for listening to me today and I look forward to enjoying the rest of the event with you.